hi there. It's Mr. Tremaine with Geometry. And we are in Chapter 6, Section 4, Properties of Special Parallel. <clears throat> the objective is that students, you guys, will be able to prove and apply properties of rectangles, rhombuses, rhombi, and squares using these properties to solve problems. Alrighty. So previously we talked about parallelograms, right? So, these three shapes are actually all parallelograms. So remember with the definition of parallelogram, right? It's a quadrilateral whose opposite sides are congruent and parallel. Well, couldn't that also just be a rectangle? Right. Couldn't it be a square? Then we'll talk about what a rhombus is, right? But looking at a rectangle, right? So a rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles. All right, so we know, obviously we should know what a rectangle is, okay? So the properties of a rectangle, right? We know that if a quadrilateral is a rectangle, then like I said before, then we know it's also a parallelogram. And then if the parallelogram is a rectangle, then its diagonals are congruent, right? So those are the two features of a parallelogram, or of a rectangle, right? Obviously, opposite sides congruent, angles are 90, and then we know that the diagonals are congruent as well, right? So GJ is congruent to HK, all right? And then other than that, right, because it's a parallelogram, all the other properties that a parallelogram has, a rectangle has. Once again, that's the rectangle. The next shape we'll talk about is the rhombus, all right? The rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides, okay? All right, so first, obviously, if it's if a quadrilateral is a rhombus, then we know, once again, it's a parallelogram. Okay. Then we know if a parallelogram is a rhombus, then its diagonals are perpendicular. Right, it says nothing about the diagonals being congruent, just being perpendicular. And lastly, if a parallelogram is a rhombus, then... Each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. All right, so if you look, what's it mean to bisect? Right, it should cut these angles into two equal parts. All right, it should cut these angles into two equal parts. All right, and then once again, since a rhombus is a parallelogram, right, it has all the other properties of parallelogram as well. Right, now that's a square. All right. A square is a quadrilateral with four right angles and four congruent sides. A square is a parallelogram, a rectangle, and a rhombus. All right, now what do we mean by that? Okay, well, it's a rhombus because... Has four congruent sides. It's a rectangle because we have those 90 degree angles. And then it's a parallelogram, right? Because these opposite sides are congruent. All right, so a square, obviously, we should know the property of a square, right? Equal sides, equal angles, opposite sides parallel, right? Boom. So once again, rectangle, rhombus, square. So now it has, that means it has the properties of all three of these, right? So then the diagonals of a square should be congruent, right? And they should be perpendicular as well. Right, it should be congruent and perpendicular because, right, it's a rhombus and it's a rectangle. 
Yeah, they should bisect each other as well. Because it's a parallel grid. All right. Tell whether each figure must be a rectangle, a rhombus, or square based on the information given. All right, so number one, what would it be? This one would be a rectangle. Now, some of you might say, oh, it's a square, right? But not all the sides are congruent. However, number two, I see that the sides are congruent, making it a square. And then lastly, oh, it looks like a square. However, do I know these angles are 90? No, I don't, right? So then this would just be considered a rhombus. All right, now go ahead on your own. Go ahead and construct each of the following. So pause the video, do that now. All right, hopefully you pause the video and you did that. All right, so just double check like a square. Make sure your sides are congruent. Make sure your angles are congruent. A rhombus. Oof. Try that again. Right, remember a rhombus. As long as everything's parallel. Okay. And then make sure all the sides are equal. And then a rectangle, right, you guys should know, doesn't matter if the sides are equal. As long as everything's 90, right, then the opposite sides would be equal. Right, so these would be equal there, and these would be equal here. All right, so special parallelogram. So it says A, B, C, D is a rectangle. Find each length. So rectangle, that means all of these would be 90, right? Okay, so first let's solve for BD. All right, so BD is this that whole diagonal right here. Now remember, we know we know ABCD is a rectangle, but therefore it's also a parallelogram. And what do we know about the diagonals of parallelogram? They bisect each other, so these two should be equal. Making BD 6.5 times 2, which is 13. Next, we have CD. Once again, what do we know about opposite sides of a rectangle? Congruent, so it would just be 5 inches. Excuse me, that's 13 inches for the previous one as well. Then we have AC. AC is this whole diagonal here. Remember, properties of rectangle. Just scrolling back up, right? Properties of rectangle. What do I know about the diagonals? I know the diagonals are congruent, right? So therefore, if I know one diagonal, I should know the other. So AC should be congruent to BD, making it. 13 inches. Then lastly, I want to solve for A, E, which is just that thing right there. Once again, should be congruent, right? Therefore, A, E would just be 6.5 inches because I know that would be congruent to E, C and congruent to B, E and congruent to E, D. All right, moving on. All right, so now we have a rhombus. All right, so I want to solve for KL. KL. All right, so what do I know about the sides of the rhombus? All right, you can always scroll back up and check, right? The sides of a rhombus, I know that it has four congruent sides, right? So all of the sides are the same. So looking at this, is there any way we can solve for one of the sides? Right? All of these are the same. All congruent. So if you're thinking this, right? I have a 3x plus 4. I have an x plus 20. Those are two sides. So what do I know about those two sides? 
Well, I know those two sides are equal. So, if I set those equal, would I be able to solve for that variable x? Yes, I would. So let's do so. Subtract x from both sides. 2x plus 4 equals 20. Subtract 4. 2x equals 16. Divide by 2 such that x equals 8. So now is that my answer? No, I am not done. I need to substitute that in. Does it matter which one I substitute in? No, it does not, right? Because all of the sides of a rhombus are congruent. So 3 times 8 is 24 plus 4, which is 28. That is 28 as well, right? So then KL would just be 28. Now, solving for these angles here. Okay, so I need to solve for MNK, which is this whole angle. So I have part of the angle here, right? But I'm still missing a big piece of information, which is what is Y? So what could I do to solve for Y? So remember with a rhombus, right? The diagonals are perpendicular, right? The diagonals are perpendicular. So looking back, looking at this diagonal here, what do I know about this angle here? It's perpendicular, meaning 9y is equal to 90. So then how could I solve for y? Just divide by 9. Whoops. So it's that y equals 10. Now that I know y equals 10, right, I can substitute it in. So 2 times 10 plus 5 which is 20 plus 5, which is 25 degrees. So now this angle here is 25 degrees. However, is that MNK? No, because MNK should be doubled that, right? Because I know with a, romp a rhombus, right, it gets bisected. So MNK would be 50 degrees. Very good. Next slide here, all right? We're going to show that diagonals of a square, H, J, K, L, are congruent. Okay, so to do that, I need to do two things. All right? I need to show that their distances are the same. And then show that they have the same slopes. All right, so let's see step one. Which is just distance. Find distance. Step two is to find slopes. Step three would be to find midpoints. All right, once I do that, right, I know that they are congruent perpendicular bisectors of each other, thus making it a square. Okay, so let's try this one. So the vertices of J, K, L, M are J, negative 2, 4, K, negative 3, negative 1, L, 2, negative 2, and M33. Find each of the following to show that the angles of square J, K, L, M are congruent perpendicular bisectors of each other. Alright, so first, you find JL. So, find the distance of JL. Negative 2 minus 2 squared plus 4 minus negative 2 squared. All right, so simplify that. You should get 16 plus 36. All right, we're okay with working with the decimal here. All right, so you add those two together. And we should get 52. And then we want to take the square root of 52, which is roughly about 7.2. Now, do the same for KM. Negative 3 minus 3 squared plus negative 1 minus 3 squared, which again is 16 plus 36. Square root of 52, which is about 7.2. Now, we want to find the slope of JL. 
sorry, I'll draw these up here as well, right? Distance. It's the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Slope formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So JL, right? 4 minus negative 2 over negative 2 minus 2, which is 6 over negative 4 or negative 3 over 2. So now do the same thing we can. Negative 1. Minus 3 over let's see minus two double check my work here, make sure I didn't do something wrong. Yes, we're good. We are good. Okay. So, we need to do, like I said, for KM, negative 1 minus 3 over negative 3 minus 3, which is negative 4 over 6, which is, oh, sorry, over negative 6, which is just 2 over 3. So, if you look at their slopes, right, they're perpendicular slopes of another, meaning the line should cross at a perpendicular angle. And then lastly, their midpoints. Once again, the midpoint formula. x2 plus x1 over 2, right? Just find the average of the x's, average of the y's. Okay, so for JL, negative 2 plus 2 divided by 2. 4 plus negative 2 divided by 2, which is 0, 1. Midpoint of Km is negative 3 plus 3 divided by 2. Negative 1 plus 3 divided by 2, which is 0, 1. Right? So you notice that, yes, this would be a square. Because these are congruent, we have perpendicular slopes. All right? And then the midpoints are congruent as well. Very good. All right, the exit ticket is on your homework. If you've got questions, feel free to email me on these. All right. Otherwise, here is your assignment. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Mr. Schmidt, signing off.